PPIs or proton pump inhibitors can be useful in a lot of medical situations, but they are overprescribed in the U.S. especially, and they can cause harm. They can decrease our stomach acid, therefore making problems with our digestion, causing more bloating. We can't um, process proteins as well. There can be a lot of issues that can develop after long-term use of these medications. So we're talking about that today and how to recover and boost your stomach acid after coming off of PPI medication. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer, and welcome to my channel. I'm a functional medicine doctor, family doctor, and registered dietitian. I am here on a mission to help you improve your gut health, and I'd love for you to help share my mission and grow my mission, grow my channel, by sharing out the videos, the playlists, you know, sending this to somebody maybe who thinks, who you think uh, needs better gut health or has expressed interest in that and also just checking you yourself checking out my channel subscribing liking sharing and hitting the bell to be notified when I post a new video every Friday and that way we can keep this channel going so let's talk about PPIs what are they proton pump inhibitors so they basically are prescribed by doctors a lot of times family doctors primary care doctors um, internal medicine doctors and GI doctors a lot of times are the ones that prescribe them. And for a reason, for if somebody has hot symptoms of high stomach acid reflux, they've found something on their um, endos endoscopy, which is their upper GI scope, that looking at their stomach, and they found that you have um, issues with uh, gastritis or ulcers, then they will prescribe them. Now, if that's your situation, if you have gastritis or ulcers or... Um, Barrett's esophagus, then you want to discuss all this. And all every time you watch a video on YouTube and it advises you to change you, the way you do things, you want to, dis to discuss it with your healthcare provider because none of us on YouTube can act as your healthcare providers. Obviously, we're just giving advice based on what we've observed in our patients or in ourselves, but it's always best to discuss with your healthcare provider. But be sure you have a healthcare provider you trust and that will work with you and understand and listen. So, um, if you have Barrett's or gastritis or ulcers, don't stop your PPI medication without discussing it with your provider because potentially the situation may have healed and maybe you can come off your PPI with Barrett's esophagus, which is a transformation of the lining in the esophagus. You, you might not be able to come off of your PPI. It might be safer for you to stay on it. But in a lot of situations, these medications are prescribed just for heartburn symptoms or just the doctor doesn't know what to do for your gut health could be maybe IBS, it could be SIBO, it could be dysbiosis, but they're prescribing the um, PPI just to make your symptoms better. And it's all out of good intentions, but these medications aren't really made to be long-term medications unless those other, you have those other situations like I talked about where they can be life-saving in some situations. So if you're in the camp where they have prescribed it for just discomfort and reflux and heartburn, you probably don't need to be on it as long as you may have been. It's short term, a couple months, maybe or less, six weeks is okay. But coming off of it after that period of time can be very difficult. You can have reflux, heartburn, reflux, I mean, reflex, heartburn, reflex, reflex, and that can make your symptoms reappear. So it makes you feel like you need the medicine, but there are ways to come off of it. So what we're focusing on today is how to replay or how to repair your stomach acid after PPIs. I do have some videos on um, different ways to repair your gut, and, and there's a lot of videos on that. So please check those out. But there are some ways that you can improve your stomach acid after coming off a of PPI. So if you've done the major big step of coming off a of PPI and now need to figure out what to do next, one thing to look at is do you actually have high stomach acid? A lot of times people will have low stomach acid and then be started on the PPIs because the low stomach acid symptoms can mimic the same symptoms that high stomach acid do, meaning the heartburn, the reflux, abdominal pain, burping, all those things can be either from high or low stomach acid. So one test to look for that you can do at home, it's not an exact science, but one thing you can do is a burp test. So you can take a quarter teaspoon first thing in the morning without before eating or drinking, take a quarter teaspoon of a baking soda, doesn't matter what brand, put it into four to six ounces of cold water, and you drink that whole cup of cold water, and then you time it. And if you burp within three minutes, your stomach acid is probably good. If you don't burp within 
like if you burp between three and five minutes, then you might have a little bit of low stomach acid. If it takes you beyond five minutes and you don't burp, you probably have low stomach acid. So some ways to replace that we will talk about in a minute here. What I want to mention first is that I have a Trust Your Gut course, which helps to all these steps to rebalance your gut, because a lot of times it's not as simple as replacing your stomach acid. If it is for you, that is wonderful. And I hope it's that simple for you that your gut feels better after replacing your stomach acid if you, in fact, have low stomach acid. But if that doesn't do the trick for you, that this is a way to work with my team and myself through weekly coaching calls, through our private network on Mighty Networks called Trust Your Gut and through the whole course where we lead you through all the science behind it, all the physiology, but also the transformation of taking you from an unhealthy gut to a healthy gut where you feel comfortable, you can trust your gut again, you have normal, you don't have pain, you digest well, you have normal bowel movements, you have energy, your skin looks good, all those things that can relate to gut. So check that out in the link down below and book a call to talk with our team to about what this course is and what this program is and what this lifetime membership is. And that's what every membership into Trust Your Gut includes, a lifetime membership for the, the lifetime of the course. So back to stomach acid. Um, so if you find you have low stomach acid, then some things you can do at home, you can take some apple cider vinegar. Never drink apple cider vinegar on its own. You always need to dilute it. So a couple, um, like tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and four to six ounces of water is diluted and you can, uh, or a couple teaspoons, and you can drink that in the morning, first thing in the morning, and that can help. You can drink ginger tea, put ginger in your food, take ginger capsules, that can help as well. You can um, take Swedish bitters. Those can help replace your stomach acid. I would take those with every meal. And then another thing I, I recommend if somebody's really in a bad state with their stomach acid is going to the next step of testing and getting a supplement called Betaine HCL and trying to see how low your stomach acid actually is. Never use Betaine HCL or any of these other things if you do have Barrett's esophagus, gastritis, or stomach ulcers, because it can trigger those symptoms and make that acid worse. But if it's for simple reasons that you were on a PPI, like um, heartburn, abdominal pain, IBS kind of symptoms, then you are safe to try this test. So the next step of test would be, you know, using the Betaine HCL, and that is a supplement that usually comes in 300 to 500 milligrams, typically not vegetarian. So if you're vegetarian, you probably don't want to do this test this way, and you can use the bitters instead. But you can take one capsule with every protein-containing meal, and I have a PDF down below, so you don't have to write any of this down. One capsule with every protein-containing meal, then the next day you take it up to two capsules with every protein-containing meal, following daily until you reach five with every protein-containing meal. I'm not recommending you take five with every meal for the rest of your life. This is just a test. So if you feel, whenever at any point along the way, let's say at one capsule, you feel burning or reflux or abdominal pain or worsening of your symptoms, then you don't have low stomach acid. You don't need this. If you feel it at two, then you go back to one. If you feel it at three, then you go back to two. It's all in the PDF, but that's another more advanced way to test your stomach acid. And you may need some betaine HCL to help you digest your, your proteins and to improve your stomach acid. But you may be able to do it just with um, the, the ginger the diluted, or the diluted apple cider vinegar or the Swedish bitters. Now, another way to do it to improve your stomach acid is simple. And it, it's simple, but it's not done enough. And that's to chew your food slowly. I would say 20 to 30 chews before you swallow. That can really help your digestion and help improve your stomach acid. Another way is to not eat processed foods. Now that's going to help your gut in general. So generally looking at a label, does it have five ingredients or more? Probably a processed food. There are some healthy foods and obviously home recipes don't count, but there's some healthy foods that have five or more. But if, you, if they're also in that label ingredient, there's foods you can't pronounce that sound like additives, preservatives, that's a processed food. So trying to eat things from the earth that are real, that don't have a lot of ingredients, that don't have fake colors, preservatives, sugars, added sugars in them will help your gut heal and will help replace or improve your stomach acid. So those are all ways that you can boost your stomach acid after coming off a of PPI and ways that you can test your stomach acid after coming off a of PPI. 
If you have any comments or questions on that, again, I can't offer individual medical advice, but comments or simple questions on that, please let me know in the comments down below. If you want to learn more about my program, Trust Your Gut, that's the, um, the way that you can work with myself and my team and have a lifetime membership, then please book a call. And you can also join our Mighty Networks, our, my main Mighty Network, the Dr. Shelley Meyer Mighty Network, which is like a Facebook group, but without the ads and algorithms and big name social media, just a private way for us to all communicate on gut health and functional medicine and hormone health. So join us there if you would like. There's a link down below for that too. And there are links down below um, for the PDF as well. So I can't wait to see you next week. And thanks for joining me. Thanks for helping to share in this mission. And please share this out to others who you feel might need this help. And we'll see you next time.